And welcome back, the Caesar Man Warrior. This is another patron roster review, and this is in our Benetrader from the Kobayashi Maru. Now, he's free to play. He's been playing for almost two years, and he is kind of got a legendaries character focus. He wants to get all of the, you know, legendaries and heroes journey characters um, unlocked and leveled up. So that's kind of the skewed aspect that he wants me to have when he's going through when I'm going through all this now. Now, all he wants, the basic primary thing, is he wants offensive and defensive teams for both Territory Wars and Grand Arena. He can use them for both, uh, and he wants to know kind of what should he be using on offense uh, and defense, kind of how far to take them, that kind of thing. But he wants me to skew all my information to help him with all of the legendaries that he either needs to get or is still working on. So we're going to go... So we're going to go through his um, roster really quick, and we're going to start with offensive teams I feel like are kind of basically ready to rock and roll already for him. Um, he could use some of these teams on defense, of course, as well, but these are teams that are basically right now ready to go on offense, and then we'll go into the defensive teams that really need a lot of work, and the teams I feel like he should have on defense are actually the ones that need the most work. So let's go ahead and get right into his offensive teams. Now, the first team that he should be using for offense, in my opinion, long term, is going to be Rebels. And this Rebels team is going to consist of Commander Luke Skywalker, Chewbacca, Han Solo, plus two. Now, if you want Commander Luke and um, Han to be guarded well, by Chewbacca, Han always gets guarded, but the Commander Luke, you're going to have to have two people that are tankier than Commander Luke, you know, with total health and protection for them to um, not be guarded because it's the it's the least health and protection individuals. So you would have to put two kind of real tanky tanks, um, such as Scarif Rebel, Pathfinder, and Baze. If you did that, Scarif Rebel, Pathfinder, and like a really tanky Baze, it would ensure that the guard would go on Commander Luke. This is important because Commander Luke can hit whoever he wants and when he goes provided he's guarded Chewbacca goes there as well with the bonus damage so I would highly recommend working on as far as offense a chase team or at minimum bays and so if you look your bays is seven star gear eight and then chase uh, Chirrut is um, seven star gear eight as well if you're not going to focus on Chirrut that's okay but at a minimum get bays Malbus the auto taunt and he's super tanky he'd be a great individual to put with the Scarif Rebel Pathfinder to make sure that Commander Luke gets the guard. And that's about it, just basically getting him up. The reason why I prefer this team on offense is it can kill almost everything, and it's a really, really good team to kind of have in your pocket on offense to make sure that you're winning all of your battles. Now, the next team is another team you can, of course, use on offense or defense. I prefer offense, and this is Jedi Training Ray plus four droids. Now, the four droids you can use is R2, D2, BB-8, plus two, and the plus two could be any two you choose. C-3PO would work really, really well, but honestly, you can use whichever four droids you want. Now, if you look at your droids, the top four with C-3PO and Chopper included are really the highest geared, and Chopper works great because he has a dispel. Um, he's got taunt in his unique really makes him durable. So the top four droids with JTR would be great. Now, the reason why I like to use this team on offense is just like the Rebels, you can kill almost anything with it. It's really kind of like a Swiss Army knife as far as the, um, you know, ability to really take out almost anything that's out there with the droids there's just so much turn meter this team is really fast and there is a ton of control with um, JTR and the ability to mind control and things as such so rebels and resistance are really really great offensive teams now, I know where you're at. You probably are putting Revan on defense, but um, once you build the defensive teams I'm going to suggest, I would actually suggest you keep your Jedi Knight Revan on offense. It's going to, you're going to be able to tweak this team in a very specific way and be able to beat Darth Revan's as well. So I would definitely use this as your one of your offensive teams, much like um, Jedi Training Ray and CLS. This is just a great offense powerhouse. And there are some really solid defensive teams I'm going to talk about that will really get you 
um, up and running on defense. Now, you've got a lot of work on defense, but I would still, if it was me, keep this Revan team on offense. And Hermit Yoda is a part of that, and that's good. You've got him uh, Zeded with a gear 11. You've also got, of course, Jolie Bindo and Bastila, General Kenobi, Revan. They all look great. Um, the only you know individual, I will say, on this team that you might want to consider you know, really developing out is going to be Anakin. And the reason is Anakin is just such a great Jedi and you don't have him. Now, he also is great in ships as well, but Jedi Knight Anakin after his rework is phenomenal. Just a ton, I mean, a ton of damage and he's got a lot of control with, you know, healing uh, health down and healing um, a, or buff immunity on top of the, the target and stuff. So he really works well with targeting tanks and making sure that tanks don't get to do that what tanks do. So, and you can put, you know, master's training over him immediately and let him go right away. Um, you just need a really fast Hermit Yoda, put all the speed into Hermit Yoda and he'll kind of get the team going. He's kind of your turn meter guy on this team, but you don't have Jedi Knight Anakin really developed out. So, you know, with your CLS team, you'd probably want to work on Chase. With Jedi training Ray, you'd probably want to work a little bit on um, your droids just a little bit. And then with Revan team, you know, if you can get Jedi Knight um, Anakin, that would be phenomenal. Now, again, this is another really popular defense team that a lot of people like to put on defense, especially where you're at. Again, I have really great defensive ideas for you that are not including Treya, surprisingly, and Treya is another one of those teams, just like Rebels, uh, you know, JTR and Revan that can um, beat most most stuff out there. And so it's just a really, really solid team to go against like smugglers or go against, um, you know, bounty hunters or go against First Order or go against Rebels or go against JTR. It's just a really solid team and so it would be Treya as the lead just for the durability of the you know protection regeneration and the the cleansing the self cleansing on their turn and all of that um Treya Scion and Nihilus the triumvirate for sure with Sith Trooper a double tank never hurts anyone especially on offense because you have control and then really the best uh fifth in this slot is going to be Bastila Shan Fallen for now because you don't have her for any other team right now. And so Bastila Shan Fallen for sure in this team, even at gear eight, it's her kit. It's just an amazing kit and she's very durable. Um, she would work really, really well under Darth Treya. And that would be your fourth team. If there was a couple of characters here in Sith that I would work on uh, to try and make this team kind of more solid, would be Bastila Shan Fallen and Emperor Palpatine. Those two I would get up. Now you did ask me kind of like you're having a hard time with gear like do I take them to gear 11 or gear 12 um when they're offensive teams, most of the time Gear 11 works because you can kind of cherry pick who you're going against. So you can kind of make sure that, you know, your team is as good as their team. Um, but eventually, all these teams, you want Gear 12, eventually. So you want to kind of keep an eye on on a like a particular team, let's say CLS team, you, you know, your Rebels. You just kind of focus down on those like top three characters. We're talking about like, you know, I, I, I call it the triumvirate of each team. So for CLS, CLS, it would be, you know, um, Han Solo, CLS, and Chewie. Those three should be gear 12. In here, it would be Darth Treya, Darth Sion, Darth Nihilus. In JTR, it would be her, R2-D2, and BB-8. Uh, for Revan, it would be Revan, you know, um, probably either Hermit Yoda or, um, you know, whatever. But Jolie would definitely be in there. And then Basil Sean could be, but possibly. But Hermit Yoda for the extra speed uh, when he gets a gear 12. Those are like kind of, there's like always about three characters in each team that really, really, really benefit from really getting that extra gear level, extra speed, extra gear 12 plus pieces, things like that. The other couple of people on the team can actually be underpowered and still the team will still click really, really well on offense. So there's that. And then the last team for offense, the fifth team I would recommend for you is Night Sisters. And again, all of your teams on offense right now are like ready to chew up an opposing team. You're doing phenomenal uh, with your with your offensive team. CLS looks great already. JTR, Revan, Treya, and then Night Sisters. And the reason why I suggest Night Sisters on offense, although you could set them on defense, is just because they can kill, again, almost anything. Um, each of these teams can kill basically anything out there with the exception of Revan or Darth Revan. Um, Revan, Darth Revan um, are kind of, you know, and then Padme teams. Those three are kind of the hardest teams to kill and you're going to struggle a little bit with them. So you're going to have to create your JTR team to beat a Darth Revan team. Um, if they don't have Malak, you'll be fine. And then, um, you know, for 
your opposing team, um, if they have the Padme team, you're going to have to come up with uh, a counter that's going to work. Basically, any team where there's not, um, you know, bonus turns. And so like Treya works pretty well because she's not creating bonus turns and you're able to um, kind of debuff the team and then you're able, even though you apply the debuffs and she'll do an AOE cleanse, you're able to survive long enough that you can start killing distinct individuals on that team with your Nihilus Annihilate. Um, and there's some pretty big damage that you'll get from your tank and whatnot. So <clears throat> you've got some counters, but you need to keep these offense powerhouses because of who you're going to be slowly seeing in the future. Night Sisters can kill almost anything but those teams I just mentioned. And with the right modding and you know gear, you can actually use Night Sisters against a couple of them. So just something to consider. Um, if you were going to go against a Padme team, you would actually try to focus down one character at a time. You would not do the bonus attacks like a mass attacks. You would just uh, use you know basically basics and focus down one individual until they were dead, and then focus down another one. And in the meantime, you'd be getting some of your characters one shot, um, and then you'd be reviving them, obviously. So um, this can work against Padme, although it's a little more difficult. Um, but on offense, like I said, this kills almost anything, and you're set, ready to go with the top. Um, your Talia is great. Uh, Night Sister Spirit is great for PvP, which is what we're talking about: Territory Wars and Territory or Grand Arena. So Night Sister Spirit, I would continue to develop to gear 11 eventually. The triumvirate, so to speak, of this team is the Zombie, Talzin, and Ventress. Really, Talzin, Ventress, and Zombie have to be gear 12 and really sustainable. Um, old Daka is kind of the fourth best on this team that's really needed. Um, and so, you know, you definitely would benefit from getting her eventually to gear 12. But um, as pieces come in you can just kind of see where you know characters are just focus on like the top three for each of these offensive teams now let's move to defense and let's talk about the top five defensive teams i feel like you have and should work on we're going to start with the one that i feel like you need the most work on or the one that you should be focused on first so what we're going into is a priority list of the top four teams you should work on there's actually five total teams but we're going to go from the number one most important team that you should be focused on and then go down from there so the number one team you should be focused on right now is your old republic now very specifically karth onassi okay your mission zalbar and candorous ordo so the karth lead with zalbar mission candorous plus one and that plus one could be any any other tank or anything with dot synergy is a phenomenal defensive team and it requires a meta counter one of the top five teams to beat it there's so much durability with this team with the regeneration of protection and whatnot and the insane 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 amount of attacks that mission can get once she gets her uh zeta because you know Every time someone hits Zalbar, he counters, she shoots. Another person hits Zalbar, she counters, she shoots. You know, it's just, it's, it's maddening if you go against it. It's a really, really great team. And Candorous is a total MVP, super tanky guy. And he just, he shoots three times if they have protection. He puts Tenacity down. He puts three dots when he shoots those three times. And those dots have synergy with Mission and Zalbar both as well. And so this is just one of those teams. But you need this because of Darth Revan. And you said you wanted me to skew these towards legendary characters, heroes, journey characters, you know, fallen characters, things like that. And the number one character I I feel like you should be running for right now is going to be obviously Darth Darth Revan and eventually Malik. And to do that, you're going to have to really uh, rev these individuals up. You can ignore Jahani and T3 for the most part. Um, you know, get T3 like you did T3 seven star gear seven. Do that with Jahani seven star gear seven. Um, you know. They can kind of be what they are, they are uh, to get the Revan and Darth Revan, but the rest you're going to use in a Territory War Grand Arena team. So Candorous, Mission, Zalbar, and Karth, definitely get those guys, you know, leveled up. Um, gear 11 is a good staging point, but eventually you'll want to take them to gear 12 or gear 11 with their Zeta. So it just depends uh, because then you'll be good enough for Malik. So this is the number one team for uh defense for a defensive team that considers legendary characters that you should be working on after that you're going to move to separatists this is a really 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 great team and it's going to get you padme which is one of the best you know top three best teams in the entire game as a galactic republic team um, but you're not there yet and really the top 
uh, characters in here for that would be General Grievous, Droid Ica, B1, B2, plus one. That plus one could be Magna Guard, it could be Newt, Gunray, it could be Count Dooku. You could even ignore the fifth and just use Sunfac for now. Uh, but General Grievous, the B1, the B2, and Droid Ica, these are going to be the next four after your Old Republic that you focus on. Get them all to gear 11 for now. That should be sufficient for the event. But eventually, down the road, you're going to get them all to gear 12. General Grievous really benefits an insane amount by getting to gear 12. So that's the one on the entire team I would highly focus on getting to gear 12. He gets... Uh, a bunch, like 18,000 extra health or whatever, just from gear 12 alone pieces. So that's pretty awesome. But the Separatists are going to be, they're a really great defensive team. Uh, they take meta to kill them. Uh, they're very, very durable, and they're going to do an insane job being able to really chew through. Now, to keep in mind, uh, with the new clones, kind of the rework and stuff with Shock T, this team on defense would be beat by the clones. But the good news is not a ton of people have Shock T and all of the clones maxed out this is still a team you want to get for Padme due to like legendary style events and it's still a top five team for defense so definitely focus on this after your old republic now, number three is smugglers, and the good news with smugglers is there's really only three you have to focus on. The rest are choices, but Kira is an absolute must. She's a great, insane, phenomenal leader, even without Zetas. L3, amazing tank, and Vandor is an absolute must. He brings them back to life over and over and over and makes the team really click. And you could use Kira, Vandor, L3, Infus Nest, plus one, like uh, you know Stormtrooper Han or someone like that. It doesn't even have to be anyone. And if you really want to make an insane uh, defensive team, you could use Kira, L3, Vandor, Chewie, and Han. That actually on a defense is insane. Now, I do suggest, like I said, Chewie and Han on offense, but you got to get Kira up, L3 up, and Vandor. Those are literally a like the triumvirate staple of a defensive smuggler team. And the smuggler teams are super, super durable, take meta to, def to defeat and destroy, and are just a really, really solid choice for a defensive team in the game. Um, you got to remember too, this the smugglers, a lot of them are um, kind of incorporated into ships. So like uh, with L3 and young Lando Calrissian, if you wanted, you could develop uh, young Lando while you simultaneously farm his ship. His ship is phenomenal for um, being a re reinforcement for defensive for like territory wars grand arena as well so, so something to consider there and he could be your plus one on this team as well i've used him often now his kid is a bit rng an rng fest but he works really really well helping pass the prepared around on all these characters which really helps vandor revive everybody so keep that in mind but kira l3 and vandor at a minimum definitely need to develop after you've developed your Old Republic and then your um, General Grievous droids. And in fourth place is First Order, and the reason why I say these guys are going to be last after those three is those three teams are actually, in my opinion, better teams on defense than First Order is. Uh, First Order now can be beat by quite a bit, and um, they're a, they're a staple. They're kind of a you know a top five defensive team for Territory Wars Grand Arena, especially once you get them all maxed out. But you already have them kind of seven star gear eight with a Zeta on Kylo Ren on mass, so they're already kind of a a base defensive team you can use. Yes, someone's going to bring in a big team and beat it but if they they see them at gear eight and they think oh this is a crap team and they take in something weaker um, the resiliency of this team uh, will be tested and there's a good chance they could fail so they still got to kind of bring in something overpowered to beat it and then they've wasted something really decent on a team that's really not actually that decent at all but eventually after you've done you know your old republic the general grievous droids and your three smugglers you're going to want to move into first order and finish them off this is a phenomenal team and the top five are actually the ones you want to develop. Kylo Ren Unmasked, Kylo Ren, First Order Stormtrooper, First Order Officer and Executioner. You have all the right characters at seven stars gear eight. They're like prepped, ready to go to go to the next level. Take them to gear 11 minimum, um, but you could eventually take them to gear 12. The, the character that really benefits from gear 12 the most is going to be first order officer and first order executioner. First order officer for the additional speed, which you really need on this team. And then first order executioner uh, really benefits from the additional damage output that he gets from all the gear 12 pieces. So uh, really 
really consider those two going to gear 12. And then after this, the last team that you'll want to go to is your bounty hunters. Now, right now, your bounty hunters, the reason why they're in fifth place is they're golden. Right now, where they're at, they're exactly where you, you want them to be. Uh, Bosk, Boba Fett, Zam Wessel, Dengar, Django Fett, they're all great. They're exactly where you want them. Even Greedo is great. So you don't really have any work for the bounty hunters. But eventually, you'll want to come back and finish off Django Fett, Boba Fett, Zam Wessel, Dengar to gear 12. And the reason is um, they do all benefit from speed, from gear 12 pieces. They gear 12 plus pieces and there's a lot more durability and this is a really great team on defense because of the resiliency and regeneration i don't know if you realize it but bosk teams regenerate an insane amount of health and protection first order same thing tons of you know protection and health regeneration smugglers same thing old republic same thing and then um the general grievous droids team is just a really really powerful team where if you have you know metalloid monstrosity zeta on general grievous he just self destructs and basically kills the opposing team so it's just it's a really difficult team to go in and beat with his insane aoe that can wipe an entire team out so all those resilient teams that regenerate health and protection these are the teams you want on defense uh, and eventually once you start getting these teams developed out on defense you're going to find yourself starting to adjust and adapt and change things you might even find yourself putting some of these teams um in offense. For example, some people have moved Bosque teams, bounty hunter teams, to an offensive nature where they use them to kill certain teams. And they they work really well to kill certain teams. In fact, a lot of people use bounty hunters to kill Darth Revan teams. They'll send in a kind of crap squad, let the Darth Revan team just use all their specials. And then Darth Revan teams have used all their specials and killed the, your team. You go back in with your overpowered bounty hunters and you can kind of take control and kill a Darth Revan team. And if you've killed maybe, you know, one or two from Darth Revan, you can actually go in with this team and wipe out the last three you know, characters that are on a Darth Revan team pretty handedly, actually. So bounty hunters, sometimes people will see the shift eventually to offense. Um, I've seen people shift first order over to offense as well. So your offense and your defensive teams are loose and you can change them, but I've given you 10 team ideas with the offensive teams basically ready to go and done and the defensive teams needing the most work you can do with this information what you want but hopefully this helps you get the legendaries you're looking for and give you a really great top 10 team for territory wars as well as your grand arena all right, in our Benetrader, this is uh, and has been a really fun time. If you have any questions about these Territory War teams uh, or, you know, modding or anything like that, you know where to find me. Hit me up on Discord privately, and I will help you out with all of that. If anyone watching has any suggestions for NR, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, keep your gaming on. Warrior, out. Out. <laughs>